I, because I was raised inner city, I know how that feels to feel like there is no way out of the mess that I'm living in. But what I believe is, is that before you as a, a pastor choose sides in this debate, that you've got to look the children in the eye and say, what am I going to give them hope with? Right. Am I going to make them obsessed with the past? Or am I going to teach them by the word of God. You know, I know a lot of people think that Kenneth Hagin is controversial and, and, and I'm, I'm going to walk with this very carefully, but it, people look at brother Hagin and they think here was a man that taught us that we could make money. Here's a man that taught us we could get rid of sniffles on demand. That's not what he was saying. No. The people are lazy. If that's what they think, what he taught us was to fight back. He taught us that we're taking things we shouldn't be taking. We're putting up with stuff. Right. And what I want to do is take, the, take a young radical who might be watching right now. And you're angry because the police are corrupt, and many are. You're angry because the system seems rigged against you. And in many ways, it is. But after it is all said and done and the dust settles, I know what I did in the inner city. I heard a voice say, you follow me, and I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. There comes a point where you got to tell the Democrats they are not your salvation. You've got to tell the Republicans they are not your salvation. Mm -hmm. You've got to tell the angry individual who wants you to join their agenda of a new world order. They are not your salvation. You've got to hold out for something better, and that better is... I'm a child of God. I'm redeemed by the blood of God. God has a destiny for me. If a door closes, God will open it. I depend on the word of God, not the word of man. I don't depend on the power of man, the influence of man, but I depend entirely on the love of God that he has for me. That's what we've got to instill. Absolutely. You know, if we imprison another generation in grievance politics and in anger, we're going to steal their opportunity to prepare for a career. Right. That's and right. that anger cannot do that. You no. can't do that to your kids. No. And the word now, doesn't teach it either, right? The word doesn't teach us to do that. We, we're not supposed to bubble wrap them and protect them from everything. We're supposed to, you know, the kingdom of God suffers violence. And, and in order for this to happen, we have to be willing to confront things, in, including in our own hearts. So that's what we're trying to encourage people. Start with your heart. See, you know, Psalm 39, reveal, Lord, if there's anything in me, because I don't want to be giving everybody else orders until I'm trying to get right in my own heart. And, and he'll show you. So you, you quoted, go ahead. I'm sorry, uh, go you ahead. quoted Charles Finney, and it says, as Satan rules in our halls of legislation, the pulpit is responsible for that. And I believe that really is a true statement because, you know, I, you know many have said, oh, no, church and, and, and government has to be separate. Well, I, I don't see that in the word of God. And no. so we need to, as a church, stand up. We have to stand up for righteousness sake and, and, and express, uh, you know, what does the word say about this thing? See, that's my, that's my opinion. If the word yes. says it's wrong, then, then it's wrong. Because it's when wrong. I was living a lifestyle, when I was living in inner city, when I was living, you know, far away from the Lord, it really screwed me up in plain English. But when you, when, when I, when a God got a hold of me and had me live my life according to His way, wasn't yeah. that wasn't that it was always so easy? Mm -hmm. But He got my life on track, and the the experience that I've had from it, I trust Him, and that's why, like with Christians voting and going against the word of God, I can't comprehend that because it's very no. clear what the Bible says that, you know, don't call evil good and good evil. Adhere to what the word of God says. Let's just look at abortion, right? How do you vote for an individual that supports third term abortion? I don't find that in the word and how you can no. come back and say and give me another argument. I can't, I don't understand where that's coming from because it's not the word of God. And seeing that's where we've gotten so fouled up. If we're not standing upon the word, I'm not talking about religious. 
uh, attitude. I'm talking about a heart that's serving God, following him really hard. If you're not serving the Lord, if you're serving the Lord and you go against the word, you have to deal with him right. because we're responsible for what we know. Yes. Yeah, that was good right there. That, yeah. that, was a, that was a flow of the Holy Spirit right there. Amen. Let me add to that. I was on NBC, and uh, they gave me a gotcha question. They looked at me and said, what is your opinion of homosexuality? And after he said it, the guy had a grin on his face like, I got you. You're dead. You're dead <laughs> to right. And I'm, I'm sitting there, and I wait. And I look at him, and I said, you know, my opinion became irrelevant when God took over my life. Amen. It's a great I answer. I don't have a right to an opinion. But now I can tell you what the word of God says right. about it. Right. And now here's what he didn't like. The left doesn't like to say we don't believe in the Bible. They don't like to say that. That's too, that's too honest. That's too obvious. It's kind of like saying... We think there's a virus for Christians and a virus for everybody else, so the Christians don't get to go to church and small business owners shouldn't open up. But everyone else, free to do whatever you want. Hmm. Now, and they don't want to admit there's a double standard, but they also don't want to be found to be anti-Bible mm -hmm. because they instantly alienate of maybe 80 million Americans because the absolute, the attitude toward the Bible is remaining strong in the United States. Right. So what I did is I shifted the argument and said, now you're gonna to have to deal with the Bible. And that's why what you said, Tricia, was so good. It is all about the word of God. Right. Word of God, you tell me I can't go to this college because of my color. Word of God says that if God wants me there, that door is gonna open. Right. Absolutely, yeah. Rather than appeal to self-pity and anger, I'm going to stand on the word of God for my right. job, my future, the doors that open to me, who I marry, how I raise my children. And I will be blessed if I follow the word of God. So being, being in the two coastal cities of New York and San Francisco, you find some very sophisticated arguments that try to take scripture and look through it in a lens that would still make you the bad guy. Because in, in, in my experience, they've said, well, the Bible says uh, the law of love is higher than the law of judgment. You're supposed to love everybody. And if that's, if that's the way they've been made and you tell them they can't do it, then you're not loving them. And, you know, you still sin, right? So who are you to judge? Because, you know, when you became a Christian, you didn't stop sinning. So why, why is this particular sin called out, you know, beyond, beyond others? And really, it's like, no, all sexual sin is called out. <laughs> you, yeah. You're supposed to make a covenant and stay faithful to one person for the rest of your life. And yes, it's bad. You know, Paul refers to homosexuality specifically, but it's sexual sin. And, yep. you know, we've really had to jump through some hoops uh, to find out how they arrived at that conclusion. You have to kind of re-engineer it and go, wow, boy, you have really tilted this thing in a way that is not that complicated. Jesus said to the woman who was caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Yeah. Right, like that, he wasn't judging her; he was giving her good advice. You know, you know what? What you, what you just identified? I want to comment on is it's called making God in your own image. Right. That's what it is. Right. That's good. It's making God in your own image. My ideal of love is what God should be like and what you should be like. So the, the guy would say to me, "Well, why would a God of love create hell?" And I said you're not really saying that right. You're saying, I can't imagine myself creating a hell, but you're not God and you're making God in your own image. Mm. And in a way you do believe in hell. That's why you bought Lysol. That's why you wear a mask. What? Well, you're fighting a virus because you love your family. And because God loves the universe, he's going to eradicate sin yeah. because sin is the worst virus in the universe. It is. And only God knows the full measure of what sin does. And we're blinded by our humanity. We don't know what the glory of God really looks like. Right. We don't know what angels see. We don't know what the universe is supposed to be like. And if God were to open our eyes and we were to see the glory of God the way it truly is, can you imagine what sin would look like to us? Right. 
And then people say, well, why would God allow this to happen or allow that to happen? And it's like, just go back to Genesis, right? They're in the garden, they're in perfect relationship with the Father, and he says, don't do something. And then, you know, the devil convinces them, oh, you won't die, don't worry, you won't die. He's just trying to hold something back from you. So God gave us free will, and they had a choice. And yeah. When they made that choice, they started a war. And there's casualties in a war. It's not that God allowed that thing to happen. It's that he allowed us to have a choice. Mm -hmm. And our lives were radically transformed when we got saved. We were both, for different reasons, involved uh, with drugs and all because we were trying to medicate our pain. And then when we came in touch with somebody who loved us unconditionally and it was a supernatural thing, like all of a sudden I didn't need the counterfeits anymore to make me feel good. I felt good about myself because I knew God loved me in a way that it was hard to, to describe with words, but you had a, a, a deep sense of knowing, I don't need that stuff anymore. I don't even want it because I don't want to defile myself. And there's an identity issue in America right now that oh, you know, it's swung so far and that you can do and be whatever you want. You know, Ben Shapiro, even though he's an Orthodox Jew, speaks really eloquently about the Judeo-Christian idea of why family has to remain intact for a culture. And, and as soon as you start saying, we don't, there's no biological difference between a man and a woman. You've just, you've attacked the very core of what it means to have identity. Mm -hmm. And it just defies common sense to think that there's no different, no biological difference. We know factually chromosomes are different in a man and a woman. Why wouldn't we even want that? It's worked for thousands of years. 